It's a journey of discovery. Coming through. A moment anxiously awaited for. On the 11 Point River in Randolph County, beneath these waters, the adventure begins. They're going to be cool, and, and if they get excited, they exude a large amount of, of slime, so you can wind up getting kind of sticky. Feel it. With Kelly Irwin as our guide, they're diving in to see if their hard work is paying off. They're searching for this. Well, they're a large and uh, not necessarily a cuddly animal. But Irwin, a herpetologist with Arkansas Game and Fish, says you can't find them anywhere else in the world except the Ozarks of southern Missouri and right here in northern Arkansas. The Ozark Hellbender is a large, fully aquatic salamander. That means they live in the water full time. And while this is where they live, it's also where they're dying. At our first stop, empty-handed, so we head downstream. To help our luck, I use an old favorite. Here, hellbender, bender, bender, bender. Maybe that'll work instead of here, fishy, fishy. About 10 seconds later. I just flipped a big rock. And there he was. Yeah. Oh Thank you. A rare find, especially since in 2011, the Ozark hellbender became a federally endangered species. Well, Ozark hellbenders in Arkansas used to occur in the Spring River and the North Fork of the White River and the 11 Point River, which we're on today. And this 11 Point River is the only place that you can find them now in the state of Arkansas. For example, back in the early 1980s, the researchers on the Spring River had found almost 365 hellbenders in about a three to four mile stretch of river. Uh, we did a survey there in from 2003 to 2006 and only found 12 individuals. So I consider that Spring River population is now extinct. Irwin, along with Jeff Brigler, a herpetologist with the Missouri Department of Conservation, and Tricia Cravel with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Missouri. Every piece of the puzzle is important. You know, every, every organism has a serves a function in the ecosystem. Are trying to save them. One of the primary uh, problems I, we're rock. seeing, obviously, is uh, erosion, the bank erosion and upper uh, watershed uh, inputs for all the sediments, the fine sands and gravels, and heavy flood events will come along and, and smother the rocky habitat that these animals require. To help their chances of survival, Brigler developed a nesting box, which Arkansas Game and Fish duplicated here, with hopes a hellbender will move in and better yet, lay eggs. On this dive, we found someone home. See its toes? For a better look, the team surfaces. After a little prodding, the homeowner is evicted. <laughs> just for a quick checkup. The team sent 39 artificial nesting boxes in the river back in July. They're back for the first time to check them, and so far they found six adults and one egg clutch. That's 450 to 500 eggs. Plus, they found three more hellbenders living under rocks. For this team, that's a huge win. It was awesome. Jeff and I were high-fiving underwater, and uh, I even was yucking it up for the camera. He caught one with me smiling as I took my regulator out and thumbs up, so it was a great moment. A moment. He's getting a little squirmy. Hi, Sammy. He's not as scary now. <laughs> He's actually pretty sweet. I'll never forget as well. Once we're done celebrating, it's back to work. I know processing Sammy and his friends. We're scanning for the pit tag. They're weighed. There goes Sammy. Measured. Hold still. I tickle your tummy. Tickle your tummy. And inspected. See how swollen and enlarged they are? Habitat loss, not the only concern for the Ozark hellbenders. Irwin says they're also battling a fungal disease. Although we do not know whether it causes the death of animals or not, we know that it's here. We also find animals now that are losing their toes and also even their entire foot. And while they may have a number of things working against them. And I feel that as, as those, our cowbender populations goes, so goes the quality of our sport fisheries in these rivers. The Ozark hellbenders have a number of people working for them. They're unique to the Ozark Plateau and it's something I think our Kansans should take pride in. It's a popular summertime escape. A perfect place for this group of friends. It's just really relaxing to come out here and float all day. Logan Lemley loves coming to the Caddo River in Clark County. But it's not just home to fun in the sun. 
Beneath these waters, hidden in the rocks. It's kind of creepy because I'm scared of fish. Under logs. I don't know what to think about that. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> something mysterious, something often misunderstood. I think of the ones like in the movies that, you know, electrocute you and they're big and they have teeth and they're scary. <laughs> but for Jeff Quinn, I think I might have got a glimpse of one. There's something very fascinating. I think the average Joe, when they see an eel, they think it looks like a snake. Quinn is a stream fisheries biologist with Arkansas Game and Fish. We're studying American eels because both in 2005 and 2011, the Fish and Wildlife Service was petitioned to list the American eel under the Endangered Species Act. We're trying to determine how many eels do we have, where are they located, and what is their status in the state. I got one! And on this afternoon, we're electrofishing for them. Electric current runs down these lines. Fish in the path, not hurt, just stunned. But this is something ah. I've never seen come up. It's my first time to get up close and personal with an eel. Scared. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Quinn says they've handled hundreds and have never been bitten. He says eels can be found in all of Arkansas's major river systems, but their lives begin far away. The American eel spawns in the Sargasso Sea in the ocean, off near Bermuda, off the coast of Florida. You know, they're thought to spawn at depths of really deep depth, 3,000 to 15,000 feet. That's where they catch the smallest larvae, but we've, nobody's ever actually seen them spawn. The larvae drift with the ocean currents for about a year before making it to shore. What's amazing, Quinn says, these eels traveled roughly 3,000 miles and navigated five dams just to get here. On smaller dams, sometimes they can actually crawl across ground on short, uh, on wet, rainy nights. And Quinn says since males don't migrate too far inland, Hey, you got it. Awesome. They believe Arkansas only has female eels. When they get here, they might live here between 6 to 20 years. We're not sure how long they're living here, maybe even up to 50. Then Quinn says they eventually make the journey back to the Sargasso Sea where they spawn and die. As for the eel population, Quinn says dams, overharvest out east, and the accidental introduction of an exotic parasite, three possible big factors in the decline. I don't know what these look like, some kind of dinosaur or something. <laughs> Quinn says they're working to make sure the American eel stays around for future generations. The eels are just an interesting fish. They have such an epic journey to, to get to Arkansas, and it would be just a shame if they couldn't make it back. I mean, you don't want the population to get extinct or anything like that. We need to keep them around, so I think it's good that they're picking them up and studying them. Still, Logan says he'll now have more on his mind floating down the river. I'm going to be thinking there might be an eel under me. <laughs>